Hey, it's Biker in a Hat here, and we got ourselves a new toy. So we have the uh, GoPro session camera mounted on top of my helmet, and so I thought I'd get used to using it. And why don't you climb on board with me? There's plenty of room on the bike. And for the next several minutes, we'll take a trip back in time, and I'll take you through the Pennsylvania Delaware Water Gap. We'll go through by way of Route 80, and we'll have the return trip by the older Route 611 on the Pennsylvania side. I really had to get out of the way of that truck. Anyway, uh, the water was created during the Wisconsin glacial period. And that spanned 85,000 years ago up until 11,000 years ago. It was first occupied by the Paleo Indians, a biker in distress. It was first occupied by the Paleo Indians. Paleo is from the word, uh, the Greek word meaning ancient. And the earliest signs of them in the water gap date back to 13,000 years ago. There is an Indian trail that runs up to uh, Port Jervis, New York, over to the Hudson River and down to the city of Philadelphia. It's now known as Old Mine Road. And you can find signs of their presence uh, along the remnants of that road which is up here on the New Jersey side of the river. The Paleo Indians got into this content by coming across the Bering Strait, and that's uh, the ocean between Russia and Alaska. 45,000 years ago, it was frozen, and people were migrating from one continent to the other, and that lasted until... 12,000 years ago uh, when, when that glacier ice had melted. And their their descendants made it down here centuries later, uh, 13,000 years ago. They were big animal hunters and fishers. And there was plenty of that going around uh, in this area to sustain them. We're in, we're in the gap now. So I hope the camera can catch some of the beauty of the area for those who haven't had the opportunity to drive through it. If we fast forward to the 17th century, uh, we'll find the first European settlers uh, who were mostly miners by trade. And if you go up Old Mine Road, you'll find uh, structures from their era as well, including the Millbrook Village, which is basically a reconstructed village, but some of the buildings are original. And uh, in another ride report, we'll go up Old Mine Road. That is very historic. Uh, it's a sad story, actually. They uh, kicked most of the residents of the area out back in the 1960s for the Tox Island project, which was to build a dam and create a lake out of the Delaware River. And due to budgetary reasons, primarily because of the Vietnam War, it never happened. And the people were forced out of their homes for no reason. So across the river here from us on the Pennsylvania side, is uh, the railroad, which in the 19th century began bringing out 
wealthy Victorians from the New York City area and the surrounding area for vacation. They were getting away from the heat in the city and coming out here in the cool mountain air. And the very first hotel resort for this region was the Kittatinny Hotel. And the mothers would come out with their children and spend entire summers out here. Fathers would continue working in the city and take the train out on the weekends. So on the return trip, we'll go by where that hotel once stood. Uh, it was built, I believe, in 1825, and it was renovated uh, a few times to enlarge it until it, car it was able to handle over 300 guests and up further on the hill behind it, they built the Water Gap House, a, a similar hotel and resort of uh, equal status. Uh, had many famous guests, including uh, then President Teddy Roosevelt in 1910. But by 1915, the Water Gap House burned down in 1931, the Kittatinny Hotel burned down. And with the advent of the automobile, uh, the golden era of the Water Gap came to a close. No longer were people coming out to vacation just in the Gap. They were coming out by car, which meant they could go even further, which started a whole new era of the Poconos and its resorts, and that too could be a whole separate story. So what we're going to do here is uh, take an exit, exit 4B here in New Jersey, which takes us to the town of Portland, Pennsylvania. We'll go over the old Portland Bridge, pay our toll, and we'll return by way of old Route 611, which parallels the railroad tracks and bed that used to bring out the wealthy Victorians back in the 19th century. And we'll be able to uh, go through the town of Portland and we'll see the spot where the Kittatinny Hotel once stood and we'll visit the town of Delaware Water Gap. I just have to get myself through the toll here. I used to do a lot of commuting on Route 80 through the gap that we just did about 15 years ago. It was kind of crazy leaving the house at 5 in the morning. It's dark out. And I was on my bike. Uh, commuting time, let's face it, we're all not at our happiest on our way to work. And, uh, you have drivers that are under-caffeinated, over-caffeinated, jockeying for position, snaking through those curves that we just did at high speeds. It was nuts. Here's a view back at the Gap and the Delaware River. It's hard uh, trying to show views with the helmet cam and keep your eyes on the road and not go off into the river. Uh, there's the town of Portland we're about to go through, so just if you can just bear with me, we will pay the man what we need to, and we'll be right back. How are you? Okay. Thank you. Take care. All right. All paid up. Kind of ridiculous, I guess, leaving the state and then paying a dollar to get right back into it. But here we go, down to the town of Portland. Portland is an old logging town from the 1800s. And I'll tell you, I, I moved out here in 
1985 in this area west of here. And this town looks almost the same way it did then. And when I was researching it, uh, that's exactly what I read. The population has been very stable in this area, uh, very little new construction. Uh, the, the businesses here, the bank, the post office, hardware store and such, they all service mostly the local residents here. So because of that, the town remains pretty much the same. Every time you come through, you, you think it was 30 years ago. Uh, you can tell by the age of the buildings here that a lot of it is original. Uh, the one building here on the left at the corner of the Ducklow building right here, that was the What Cheer Inn in the 1800s during the uh, logging era. And here's a, a glimpse of the homes. You can see their age as well, beautiful homes. But yeah, that was a tavern back there in its day. There's two other buildings that were hotels and taverns that are used for other purposes that are off the beaten path these days. Over here is the railroad and a glimpse of New Jersey. Well, actually not New Jersey, part of the Delaware River here. And uh, that would be the New Jersey side. And this will lead us to the Kittatinny Hotel. It's going to take uh, several more miles, so I'll probably just cut the video here. Okay, here is the Resort Point Overlook, and this is where the hotel stood. Uh, there are remnants around the area to explore. We'll try to get a quick look here. Boy, what I have loved. Used to have been here back in the day when this place stood. Anyway, it is onward to the town of Delaware Water Gap. There's more history in this town than I have time for. But I would like to point out one historical site, the old Central House built in the 1840s, uh, which has been for quite some time known as the Deerhead Inn, uh, once a hotel way back when. Uh, is now the longest running jazz club in the United States. And here it is. I love this place. Uh, it, it, it has had quite a list of world renowned musicians, jazz musicians performing there. I had the privilege of playing there myself in the 90s. And uh, again, uh, 10 years ago or so, uh, I just don't get over there often much. I don't play much anymore, and I uh, just haven't been over there for a drink to take in the talent, but I should. And if you come through this town anytime, uh, you ought to make a stop there yourself. The owners are wonderful. Uh, it, it's such a pleasure to see an old historic place taken care of like that. This is the Sycamore Grill. That's a personal place of history for me. Uh, that's where I had my first date with my lovely wife, Denise. And we'll make a right here back towards Route 80. 
And this is the Village Farmer and Bakery. It is 30 years old, and they make the best pies in the world. They simply do. Uh, if, depending on your age, if either your grandmother or great-grandmother, uh, it tastes like they made the pies for you with all the love they have. That's how good they are. The place is jammed on weekends just to go in and get those pies. They also have a great barbecue out front in the fair weather. And uh, we love to go down there as well and uh, pick up your pies. I have one more place if you're interested in hanging with me a couple more minutes. We're going to go down by the Marshalls Creek. And there is the old uh, Minnesink Inn. I really struggled finding much information on this place. Uh, there's a couple of old pictures I can show you to give you an idea of how old of a place it is. I'm guessing early 1900s, late 1800s. Uh, the Minnesink Inn is a very friendly restaurant and bar. It's funny, I show pe people pictures of the place and they, they all tell me, oh, it looks like you need to know somebody when you go in there uh, to not get smacked around. And it's just nothing like it. Um, it's nothing like that. This is a, a very happy, friendly place. It's tucked away in the middle of nothing along the Marshall Creek uh, which has flooded the place, by the way, uh, at least a few times. Waste deep water on the first floor. So they really have gone through a lot of heartache, uh, but they keep the place in great shape. There's the footbridge to its right. That footbridge was built in honor of one of the owners. Kind of a cool place to sit up there. But there it is in good shape these days, uh, great food, very reasonable prices, and uh, I used to live in walking distance. Denise and I would walk down there some nights, especially in the snow, and go inside and the wood stove would be turned up to max. But uh, we're not in walking distance any longer. We haven't been there in quite some time. So if anyone learns anything from this motorcycle ride, it's me. i, I got to get down here more often. Uh, but that's it. I'm heading up towards the Shawnee Inn Resort and Golf Course just to give you an idea of where I'm at at the moment, uh, where I'm going to turn off and head north up to my house. So I thank you for coming along. For the ride, I, I skipped an awful lot of history through there. Um, I just hit some of the main points. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the camera captured captures some of the nice scenery. And uh, as we sit here in school bus traffic, I will say thanks again. Uh, please click the subscribe button uh, next to this video and check us out at bikerinthehat.com. Uh, more videos like this and other types of videos coming soon. Uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll see you down the road.